<laughs> so and that I, someone could do so little. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did decide we had 15 minutes, 15 minutes we were going to I use for food. I got carried away and, and, and I Liz. don't like to have nothing to do on I'm stage. So in the middle here. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like a No home. need to actually sort of separate us physically. We don't, we don't ever come to blows. <laughs> no, but this is what we do in our kitchen at home is um, at my uh, younger daughter, Ellie, usually is the diplomat that keeps us apart because we're both very strong-minded and we have different opinions on how to do the kingfish, don't we? Uh, are you going first? Well, um, I will actually start, now that you've brought up kingfish, I'm going to start with ceviche. And I guess um, one of the things, I got to write the dishes today uh, because Maggie is a flat out most of the time, but it's also a good opportunity for me to do what I want. <laughs> and when I was talking to uh, Tony about you know, what we could possibly do, and I mentioned ceviche, and Marilla was at the meeting, and she said, oh, I love ceviche. And I thought, well, that's a winner. Um, <laughs> So for ceviche, we're going to use beautiful citrus that are uh, in season now to season and cook uh, the seafood. And kingfish is one of my absolute favourites. And Maggie, I think probably in fairness, one of yours. She calls me mum any other time. <laughs> it's actually a bit 50-50 because, you know, uh, <laughs> depending on the mood. Um, oh, that's true, that's true, that's true, yeah. So if I could, uh, Stephen, have my prepared citrus and I'll grab a plate just to everything that we do as a family is incredibly easy if it's not easy we just don't engage um, and the beautiful thing about quality food is it should be easy and while I start plating this no, wrong one other citrus there oh, are, sorry, some, citrus that's the ceviche. dessert citrus on sorry on yeah. <laughs> um, um, while I it's, it's in little bowls Plating yeah. this, Maggie, because, you know, somebody gave us all these dishes to do in such a short time frame. Would you like to explain the painstaking work that's gone into the baby vegetables for the... Okay, but I want to talk about citrus first. Okay. I mean, the beautiful produce we have uh, in citrus now, you know, with ruby grapefruit, blood orange, tangelos, um, all of those things. I mean, it can't but be exciting. And citrus is the most beautiful foil for anything that's rich and... Sassy, you're saying kingfish is one of our favourites, but only when it's raw. And you have to do so little to it, as she said. Now, um, vegetables. I don't always love baby vegetables. Anyone here grow ba baby vegetables? I mean, I do like them, but I only like them when they've got flavour. Um, but they are so beautiful on the plate. There's nothing better to entice people to just pick them up and eat them. Um, these have already been cooked and um, all the work has been done by somebody else in the kitchen. I'm reminded all the time. But I just want to do a really lovely salad of... Um, I should put my glasses on so I don't cut myself. Uh, and it will be nothing more than having a lovely vinaigrette to go with it. It's a given that we have this beautiful produce, but it won't do anything if we don't have a lovely olive oil, some good vinegar, a lovely vinaigrette. And um, as Australian farmers, we are doing the most amazing olive oils. And sometimes I'm going to show you how olive oil with just these great tomatoes and avocados, you need nothing else. Absolutely well, nothing Maggie's else. Maggie's absolutely right. And if I could jump in there. Yeah, yeah. Things like, well, we're uh, going to. You know, fantastic olive oils and acidulants um, just show off the produce. And that in itself is one way to uh, increase consumption. If you basically tell people what's going to go with it, and I'm just using a bit of verjuice for my vinaigre here. Um, if you haven't used verjuice <laughs> and you're having a problem <laughs> with convincing anybody that they love vegetables, this is the ingredient that's going to convert them because it basically emphasises all the flavour, the acidity picks up all the wonderful characteristics, uh, but it doesn't mask anything. Can I borrow the uh, spring onions? Yeah, uh, you can. And, oh, no, you didn't ask for that. You asked for spring onions. Spring onions. Uh, um, the spring onions. They're out the front. Let me get them. Whoops. Here. Oh, don't let We're going to spoil the beautiful display. But never mind, spring onions. I mean, Sassy is right, and I have to go in there because um, verjuice is the juice of unripened grapes, so it's a gentle acidulant. So we've got a saying, when in doubt, 
at Verdu's. <laughs> or Vincotto. It actually started with Vincotto, which <laughs> took over from Ketchup Manus, and that's a long story. I know. <laughs> that's a personal story. Okay. Um, I've just added, uh, we're going to have to do both of these at the same time. I've just added some beautiful uh, lime to the Verdu's, and Verdu's is, uh, you know, fantastic with fresh citrus. And if I can just uh, grab... The lime. I did have everything organised. Uh, Stephen, if you can just bring some limes up here. And while you're doing... And there are uh, spring onions, or you guys call them shallots, and I realise mm -hmm. there's Eastern States translation issues here because when oh, I yes. put the list through, I said shallots, and now, I was looking for them this morning, and they're all spring onions. That's an interesting point. As, as um, retailers Thank and you. growers, can we have the same right over Australia? for eschalots or spring onions and or uh, whitlock, endive, you know, all of these things, um, uh, we can do so much better so we don't have confusion. Now, I'm just, um, I've got these fantastically, well, really pretty vegetables and I'm going to glisten them with a bit of extra virgin olive oil first and I've got beetroots that are going in this as well but I don't want to put the beetroots at the same time because they're going to bleed all over the lovely vegetables. Now, Cess, we also have raw veggies, don't we? Uh, we do, and I'm, uh, as soon as I get this ceviche okay. happening, and I've just put <laughs> salt, pepper, verjuice, lime, and chervil. Okay. Uh, and if you just look at the simplicity of that... And I know you're not allowed to taste because there are food police around that say... <laughs> it will be harmful yep. to you. Whoever thought of that is really, really, really yes, got to go back to food school. Anyone from the food um, police here? <laughs> Tony, could you take that? That's one dish down. That's a kingfish ceviche. Okay. And Maybe I'm... You, um, have we only got fig vinacotta? Not we have. Oh, no, that's okay. you're improvising. And while you talk about improvising, explain why the turnips are there, Mum. The, the turnips See? are here because they're so... Um, these ones um, are so fantastic. Um, but I would prefer them raw, even. And in fact, you've got them raw. I've got them um, raw. You have such great vegetables when they're so fresh. If you can get them to market this fresh, and we had um, Saskia has just peeled all the veg and carved it. We'll show you in a moment. But for the for the minute, I'm just going to finish this vinaigrette and toss. Um, I put some olive oil. You don't know where to put the camera, do you? With two of us, <laughs> we should have warned you about that. Um, with a vinaigrette, you know, it's such a simple thing, but people so often, uh, there should only be as much vinaigrette that sort of caresses the leaves, never any left in the bottom of the dish. Um, and that's only put your vinaigrette on just before you're going to serve. The moment I've finally got your dad um, convinced of that. Okay. Yeah, but he likes soggy salad. He likes, yes. Now, I did have some parsley here, but uh, I'm going to... Parsley's over here. Okay. We are missing a few things, but I'm sure Flat they're on the tray. parsley leaves. There's nothing quite like green to um, delight a plate. So I'm going to do that. I've got this, and now I'm going to do the beet separately because of that bleeding issue. But beetroots and purple carrots. Colour on the plate. People eat with their eyes. You know, whether you know it or not, it's a bit like having acid in your food. Um, colour on your plate is truly, truly important. It so doesn't have to be complicated presentation, and I, I really think perhaps a few people have gone overboard with the whole uh, presentation versus flavour. Uh, if you allow <laughs> things to actually speak for themselves, uh, they tend to be absolutely gorgeous. I'm just going to... The ceviche that I'm working on at the moment is scallop, and the reason that we've chosen scallop today is it's so beautifully sweet. And oh. I'm going to use verjuice again, but this time with orange. And we've taken <laughs> the zest of the orange, the juice, and a few segments, and a little bit of salt and pepper. Salt and pepper Thanks. being the two Sorry, very, Steve, very I, important I don't want to ingredients. Keep them off. I just want to go shopping for these. In any kind of cooking, if you don't season your food, you're really doing it a disservice. Uh, if people, Absolutely. people are constantly asking when I do tastings in the farmer's market, and I usually right. do make them very vegetable orientated as a foil for our protein, uh, you know, my God, that's so great. What have you done with it? And it's usually fresh salt. lemons, there's salt, pepper, <laughs> you know, fresh herbs. If you 
get people cooking with citrus, herbs and, and proper seasoning, your battle is won. So I've just got the orange, some chives, and this is a dish we actually did for a degustation for uh, the Barons of the Barossa, which uh, is a venerable institution of which mum was the first female baron, I believe. And that, that um, was a very big thing in the Barossa a, a 20 years and, ago. Food and wine matching Can we dinner. Put that on the table? This sure. dish yeah. was matched with a, an old Riesling, and it was absolutely phenomenal if I do say so myself. You're allowed to. But yep. you saw that salad that I did then of the um, cooked vegetables. Now, they were just steamed. They could have been baked. There's no presentation. The colour and the beauty of the vegetables is all you need with a lovely vinaigrette. Now, talking about all you need, um, can I just talk about flavour of tomatoes? Finally, we're getting the flavour back in tomatoes. And when the only thing you ever need to do with tomatoes, as far as I'm concerned, is extra virgin olive oil, salt and pepper. And um, the thing about that is you do that, um, say, 20 minutes before you're going to serve them, and what happens is they make their own juices, and the olive oil brings out the flavour um, and creates a sort of natural slurry. So that's one of the most important things. And the other thing is... Um, now, Chef, I've got another dish down here, and you're still yet. Oh, shush! <laughs> when did you call me Chef? <laughs> I'm cooking on a Chef. We've got to mix it up chef. a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, of course, with the heritage tomatoes, you have all these beautiful colours once again. Green zebras, black crim, brown. First time I've come across brown tomatoes. So this is a really exciting thing for the industry because you don't have to do a thing to it other than we're using Murray River salt because we're South Australian and it's a great story about using uh, what is otherwise um, a, a pest, you might say. Um, there's another word I'm just missing. Uh, and turning it into a resource. Stephen, Robin, can, can I just ask for the tray that has the anchovies? A job for you. Can you do the pepper on that? Because I'm not able to. It's not working for me. So well, at least you didn't <laughs> spill it all over the table like I did earlier. <laughs> Thank you. Well, uh, Maggie, well salts done. and peppers, Ooh, the tomatoes, <laughs> which is revolutionary stuff. Um, I'm just <laughs> going to do the, uh, the beetroot carpaccio. Did you get that? <laughs> now, but that's exactly what I wanted to say. How revolutionary is it to do nothing? And that comes from confidence. You don't have to. If you've got play. a beautiful tomato, you've got yes. olive oil, salt, and pepper, you have Perhaps one of the I most could magical do some basil. ingredients. Um, let me do some basil. Well, from there, you can add anything in. You add some anchovies, some capers, some basil, you've got oh. you know, and some another crusty dish. bread yeah. and beautiful um, extra virgin olive oil that you dip the bread into after you've. Um, now, uh, are you going to let me talk about beetroot? Oh, okay. Okay, so okay. when Maggie was using the, the beetroot and you know, doing the root vegetable May salad, I? we had a bit of an argument yesterday, which is so unlike us, oh. as to whether <laughs> we should have the carpaccio par-cooked or, or raw. And I'm a huge fan of raw food just because of you know, the natural flavours. When I tried this morning the, the beetroot, they were so sweet and delicious, I thought, let's go raw. Which is and what I said in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> It's true. <laughs> um, and we've got, you know, the marvellous colours uh, over here. We've got some yellow, uh, the red. And because we were looking for the heritage varieties but couldn't quite find uh -huh. everything that we wanted, we've got these gorgeous turnips. And the sweet, peppery nature uh, of them, get your colours right, Saskia, uh, just terrific. And we're going to dress this uh, with what we call an anchois dressing, which is very, very traditional mm. and based on anchovies and I was so impressed with Martin, the head chef, who provided us Ortiz anchovies. It could have been Stephen, but that was my breakfast. <laughs> um, and, and we should, and we really should say, um, the kitchen down here has been fantastic. Beautifully fresh, just made croissant for breakfast, good coffee. Can't we've, do better. We've been spoiled, and it's great to see you know, an establishment as large as this that really cares about what they're doing. And, uh, yeah, I mean... I'm a caterer as my hobby, uh, <laughs> my hobby career on the weekends. My sister and I have a convention centre in the Barossa, and I've got to say, this whole experience, being here for the dinner last night and seeing what happens in the kitchens this morning, I have catering envy. 
It's uh, <laughs> the most amazing facility. Um, while you're doing that and making it look so beautiful and simple... Well, I do 